Alrighty, gang. Professor Bobo back in action, and I am joined over there by my good friend Crow. What's happening, buddy? And I am, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, coming out of the quarterfinals, I think everyone had pretty amazing games, uh, especially Toronto, though, from running some really wacky drafts. So I'm excited to see what they do. Yes, that that looked like a fun way to end game number three, as uh, as I did manage to catch uh, the Winion action, if you will, for Toronto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, on the flip side, I uh, had the pleasure of watching Robert Morris just dismantle Colorado School of Mines. RMU looks like uh, a darn good team. Uh, they look like they're just pretty well synergized. They you know, ran some standard things with a little bit of wrinkles. We got a little Uther Lee Ming throwing it back old school style. Um, so teams are R right now. Let's throw up our map selection screen. And we're heading to uh, Volskaya Foundry because why not? Right? Uh, like, is Volskaya like the pick of the weekend? Well, Infernal, it, yes, and we're coming from uh, from the amateur scene where Infernal uh, is usually the most popular map. But Voskaya, like in my opinion, was the second most popular map over the last couple of months after we went through like some scaling changes. And, I mean, I think it's had almost 100 percent, you know, involvement uh, as a map here uh, in the uh, sets that I have cast. Value, but mm -hmm. it's also like a lot of really careful team fighting. Yes, yes. And there aren't a lot of other maps in the game that offer a balance like that. And so I think that's why we're seeing both sky so much. Mm. It's a little bit later on the macro. Um, you know, it's more about you know picking up as many items as possible, and it's got a predictable set of it, a predictable set of objectives. And I think you can you know in the fall. A predictable set of objections. You know where the different uh, control points are going to be. I think it just lends itself to you know more of that team fight skirmish style. But our teams are ready. We're gonna go ahead and queue our draft up. Match number one here in the TCS Heroes Fall Finale Semifinal. Bit of a mouthful. Volskaya Foundry. RMU will have the first pick as this was the map selection of the University of Toronto. All right. And the last time I saw Toronto on this map. Was short hour and a half ago, they ran uh, some Pointless Aperture with Greymane Sylvanas, just dismantling structures, and we're going to see if they decide to do that again. They're not a big fan of the Mayag, but who is? Have you seen Have you seen much Mayag get through? No, no it doesn't. And, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Um, Mayag as a hero had uh, near 100% involvement rate at, um, at BlizzCon. Uh, she was a dominant hero when she was even, you know, available to be picked up. And it's, you know, it seems like we got away from Maya for a few months. Now she's right back up at the top. Yeah, I'm not sure she's ever going to go away, just with the strength that her kit has. <laughs> she's got two heroics. Um, the... <laughs> Derpy Diablo goes first. Oh, no, there we go. I like that skin. Uh, you, the toxic Diablo. the toxic Diablo is the breeze special. That um, that is the one skin in that in suite of colors that you are allowed to play with. Yes, that is one hundred percent the breeze Diablo. So big red goes first. We did have Garrosh removed. Volskaya lends itself to more of the sustain tanks. I'm not sure if Toronto wants to pivot into something maybe a little bit more flashy. Uh, but Malganis is up. Mixed results on that hero. Yeah, and there is the Genji. We did see him get through the bands. I was kind of expecting to see him picked up. It doesn't look like Toronto's going to go with the uh, unorthodox style of conflict <laughs> running prior to this game on Volskaya. It's early. That seems like an early Anubarak pickup to me, too. And here's the Uther. So we're on the tournament realm. Uh, in On live, uh, Uther's hammer has had the cool, uh, excuse me, the stun duration increased uh, to a second. So there's like a quarter second difference. However, in the first game on Tomb of the Spider Queen, uh, RMU used Uther to great effect in combination uh, with Li Ming, uh, just absolutely blowing people up. But, I mean, maybe both of these teams have the same sort of idea because Anubarak and Genji uh, are certainly a combo that is capable of finding a target when you dive in quite hard. I get the Gul'dan! Oh, nobody wants you... Gul'dan, man. Nobody, nobody, want, nobody wants you to play your hero. I'm sorry, my friend. But we do get the Jimmy, and you talked about early Anubarak. Uh, Messer Rainer would certainly love uh, to uh, throw, pour a little pepper on the bug for this game. Yeah, I... 
New Vermont not really made of, of armor. <laughs> more paper oh. up against the Rainer. And there's the hammer pick. So in the prior series, hammer was banned every single game against Toronto mm. except the last one in which they picked hammer. I and expect the Leeming. There it is, yeah. You can expect the Leeming. Leeming has risen as the counter to Sergeant Hammer. It was Chromie for a little while. There's some different ways to go about it. Uh, but Leeming right now, and with a, you can change the build up a little bit. You can try to go for uh, some different talents. Um, cooldown on Orb is, you know, one item. Uh, ooh, and a Sonya. Uh-oh. How's your, how's your, how's your leap? <laughs> how's your, how's your, ah? Uh -huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm worried about here. For both Deckard and Hammer, and they're gonna go with the Malfuel again. Uh, the Malfuel also has been played by Toronto in the prior series, uh, alongside the Hammer, more so for the double soak capability. While the rest of the team just sort of groups and mm. runs it down the lane. But he did get caught out a lot, so I we'll have to see. I uh, have to see if he's able to play a little more safely on Volskaya in this game. But it's gonna be really difficult against a Diablo. Well, I mean, Toronto is looking to force Robert Morris, you know, deep onto the back line. And, boy, Diablo into Malthiel, always a bit of a problem. We're going to flash our map select screens while our teams are loading in. Um, oh, boy. I mean, it's okay wave clear. Uh, on the flip side, you know, it's okay wave clear really for both sides. Mm -hmm. Listen, when you're when you're playing Hammer and you're going all in on the Sergeant, you know, you've you've made uh, your pick for this map. Uh, you're going all in on the tank on the back line. Let's, we're going to have to see, especially with the Uther on the front line. Uther does traditionally struggle in the hammer because it's just hard to engage. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Game number one. We're going to start off with the University of Toronto. Varsity Blues. Fresh is going to be playing the Nubarak. Saber on the Malthiel. Ember, the Prince, will be playing Genji. We say keep six on the Deckard Kane. And Ikea will be playing... The hammer. And for the blue side, we do see many Bobs. We got Bob <laughs> Ross on Leeming, Bob Shep on the Rainer, Bob Weave on the Uther, Noah on that Sonya, and Bob was that Bob Mage on the Diablo. That's, that's a little misleading. Uh, <laughs> and they're representing Robin Morris. We grow up breaking out the Uther Leeming combo, which was just devastating on Tomb. And right now, a little bit of safety here from Toronto as they choose to put three members in the top lane. In fact, Hammer moving up already. And we should see a rotation in response mm. to this. Good anchor from Fresh. Have to watch out for the Diablo. Hammer basically jabating it. Please, devastating charge me. Smelled out by Keep on the Deckard Kane. We'll flash our level one talents. Again, don't expect anything out of the ordinary. On a pale horse. Looks like we're going for Ping Pong Genji. And, ooh, this level one hammer, we got the ambush coming out for the sergeant. Yeah, well, I think I think the Genji's influence on this game is going to be extremely important for Toronto. Just, the sort of how there's like this rock, paper, scissors, leaming Genji, sergeant, hammer thing going on, where uh, if Genji isn't able to threaten the correct backline targets, the hammer, sh they should be able to have the hammer under control. And if the focus is pulled away from the hammer onto Genji, then they get the sergeant value they're looking for. Hmm. Um, and, and I believe we saw BFG in the first game. So there's burst there on top of, you know, the Anubarak mm -hmm. dive and the Genji swift strike. But, I mean, it's a comp for Toronto that kind of goes in a slightly different direction. You expect, uh, you know, a, an Anubarak-Genji combo to aggress. And you expect Hammer to just kind of hang out and wave from a distance with those large shells on the auto attack. So, uh, it's... Listen, it's a different move. Uh for Toronto, and in fact, Hammer in a bit of trouble. Just squeezes out of there. And pop those boosters and get out of there. <laughs> I think Diablo pops his head up to say hi. Uh, Robert Morris now on the support cam. It's not going to be the contest. Ooh. Most of Toronto's in the bot lane. Almost. Sonya, yes. Um, and, and you know, just to harken back to the quarterfinals, uh, it was actually VDD and not Noah. I don't know what, what's going on with the swap there. However, uh, early kills could not be secured on the offlaner for RMU, and then they wound up turning that around uh, into superior team fight. Keep an eye on Fresh. There was a miss on the Burrow. However, we do get the impale on Rainer. Everybody looking okay. It's a 4v3 now, as Anubarak has a long way to go. Should be all right. A little bit of a skirmish there. Both teams just sort of saying hello. 
Uh, Malfeo on Ooh. the Sanya in the bot lane there. That is a lot There's of swift. on to Noah. And Genji's there with the swift drag. Should be able to pick this up with the shuriken. And, and the turret. Indeed go down and drop that turret. Which is going to be really impactful during the first objective phase. Just about to come up here in hmm. 16 short seconds. So Genji as well as Malfeo are now holding on to fortification turrets. Mage on the flip side for RMU is holding on to a, a biotic emitter. We see both teams making a move towards their camps here. So we'll get a little bit of a counter, you know, Merc push in the top lane. We'll see who winds up picking it up. I do see that from Beetle Crozolo. Let's turn Crow up. There we are. Thank you, Beetle. Let me know. I'm trying to get I back. I turn myself up. So if I'm, if I'm too loud now. <laughs> yes, now we're probably too loud. Now you're probably, uh, you know. Hey, we'll figure it out. Didn't have a lot of time for a sound check because RDMU finished off their set fast. And we had that barn burner of a three-game set. Toronto and North Texas, an entertaining affair. Right, Hammer eats the arcane orb there from the main. Going to get healed up by Kane. Both teams start to vie for control over the point here. Flash our level four talents again. Nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, this is an interesting build for Uther. We're going to start things off with Silver Touch and turn it into Holy Shock. That, usually, that bit of poke uh, helps secure kills. Can be a bit of a problem for Genji if he just does not count uh, you know, the Q <laughs> amongst the uh, forms of damage he's got to worry about. And there's there is what you were pointing out in a draft. Just the... The Rainer shredding through an Uberax <laughs> health bar, not really able to keep that presence on the point, just due to the fact that oh. Rainer is not threatenable. And in fact, Malfiel, during uh, the split soak in the side lane, goes down to the Uther rotation alongside the Sanya. Uh, I had a pleasure watching Weave for two games. Uh, he will roam on his supports, and he will find opportunities there. RMU is very good at the follow-up on, on Uther with the, uh, with the Hammer of Justice. Rainer takes a little bit of impale. Not too much going on there. This looks like it should be an easy early secure uh, for RMU. However, oh, keep an eye on Genji. Somebody's got to get onto this point, and it is going to be both Anubarak and Genji. Genji eats the hammer. Uther is quite low. Fresh looking healthy. We see Ikea and the hammer starting to cheat up. Fresh and Uther get traded out, but that is the ghost of Uther. He will have heals available, particularly for Noah. Noah hits the spear on Saber, but Genji with the reset on the Swift Strike saves it. Sonya goes down 2-1. Saber goes down to the Ming Orb, and here goes Bob Ross. Painting a beautiful scene of death. Oh, boy. <laughs> the reset's finally coming through for Lee Ming, and that will send our first Triglov Protector over to Robert Morris University. How much value are they going to get here, Bobo? Well, they're going to slap the Nintendo Power Glove on the mid wall. Uh, 45 seconds left. They have Diablo as well as Li Ming in there. It looks like RMU is choosing to get the soak. They are only a half level away from level 10. This was a fairly long first objective. In fact, here comes the swap. Mm -hmm. We'll put uh, Ming on the outside, looking maybe to chip in with some siege damage. And now Uther and Diablo. Yeah, I, love, I love that swap. We don't see teams take advantage of the fact that you can remove people from the mech as much as you, mm. as you might expect. Independent Power Glove goes out and connects with the Deckard in the back line. Not going to be able to follow up on that low due to the low health of the Protector. Just kind of waiting for some of the poke damage from the Gunner. With only 3% health remaining. That key top well is gone. And you can see that RMU was maybe hoping to get a little bit more poke. And there it is. A good finish by Bob Ross. Both wells in mid and top are gone. Level 10s are now online. For Robert Morris, we have Lightning Breath, Hyperion, Disintegrate, uh, the Cocoon Counter... Wrath of the Berserker, as well as Divine Shield. Our Morris has once again moved onto the support camp, but this time it is spotted out by Ember. Most of Toronto still not really in position to come and contest this, and it is going to be picked up. No, Genji's on the point. Has that Swift Strike. It's pointing on the Dragon, but there is a huge root out of Decker Kane there with Keep. Lornado is down, pushing Noah to the side, but the first person we see fall is the Anubarak on Toronto, and now Malfiel is in there alone as the Hammer also taken out of the picture by the Ming damage. A lot of R buttons pressed in there. We saw Dragon Blade, saw the Lornado, saw the BFG. Good value on the BFG, but just not quite enough to secure a kill. Uh, that's Uther's game. Uh, if you get a target low, he's gonna click uh, on that hero and find a way to get them back out of there. Nice team fight from RMU. They're up seven to three in terms of kills, and they now have opened up a one and a half level lead. They should be going into the second objective phase with the level 13 talent advantage due to the outcome of that fight over the support camp. At that point, it's going to be a really difficult point for Toronto to uh, 
to approach. Hmm. And RMU has just been about a step ahead in the macro department. I mean, you can see in that they have captured the biotic emitter twice, although somebody did. I mean, that biotic emitter did not get picked up in that team fight. I don't know if it would have made a difference. Uh, certainly couldn't hurt. But they've taken, you know, those small steps that they gain. They've picked up the neutral camps. And they now find themselves staring down at a level 13 talent here advantage. Diablo does pull oh. that shadow charge in. They're wow. on Ember. Almost goes down. The only reason he gets away is because Weave is just micro units away from following up with the Hammer of Justice there. Mm-hmm. Take a look at our 13s. I see Giddy up for Jimmy. I love that talent. Yeah. And what? Oh boy. It makes is very, very difficult to deal with is, in team fights. Is this a. What is this Li Ming 13 here, youngster? What is this? That's a glass cannon coming out from oh Li Ming. Boy. That is bull. <laughs> that is going to end team fights very quickly if. Uh, if Bob Ross does wind up getting the same kind of efficacy as he has on this Li Ming early on. There's the poke. Yeah, glass cannon's the only talent you pick up if you're feeling very, very confident about <laughs> how your team has been performing in team fights up until this point in the game. And with with how good Weave's stuns and uh, divine shields have been, I feel like Bob Ross should feel safe. Right now, University of Toronto, the Varsity Blues, looking to get themselves up to the level 13 tier. They're about a half level away. Probably need, I, don't know, I want to say, like three or four waves, including this fortification turret. There's that nice little boost. That's maybe one wave, if you will. Malthiel will pick up another. They will have the 13 talents here, but up top, we see Diablo, Uther, and Raynor awaiting their opponents. The Ming is actually looking a little bit for the rotation. Hmm. So we do have Sonya off. So right now, this is a 5v4. Keeping an eye on Anubarak, who does go in. Oh, this is going to be a problem there. There's the Lornado. The Unstoppable is proc'd on to Raynor. Genji going in. Ember looking for the Dragon Blade. We see Divine Shield come out. Lightning Breath as well. Here comes a disengage. The counter from Sonya. Spin to win. And down goes Malthiel. The Cocoon on the backside to stop Ross. And all it will prevent are the resets. As that is another go... Maybe not. Okay. That was actually very, very brilliant. The reason that Malthiel was so far forward there... Uh... Even after the Divine Shield been popping, he was trying to wait out the Divine Shield cooldown so he could drop the the last rites. But he did, he went down to the Sonya spin just moments before it was an available option for him. Noah shows up, hits a big spear. Oh, the Lornado's out and keep an eye out because Barbaros is on the flank here. Watch it for Chef. We see the trigger up coming down as well. Fresh is gone. Ember and Keep looking to try to find a way out of there. Ross scouts out with a disintegrate. Eyes on Noah, who does have Wrath popped. And Ember flips Wears over off the wall. Just then, they're bringing the they're bringing the protector down to the bot lane to prep it for the third third objective phase. And because they've already taken uh, ports everywhere else, so. mm. and not much <laughs> not much else to do right now on the map. They will have sixteen after this siege from the trig level. We do see Melty on the top lane trying to play a little bit of catch up on the XP. And there's the sixteen tier. We'll have our talents up. There is a biotic emitter in the position of Sonya right now. Trig love. About half health, 30 seconds left. This should be the top wall. And Toronto needs to be careful because if they start to fall in this team fight, it could wind up costing them a keep. Good deflect out of them. <laughs> Almost gets punished for it by the Ming. Now they step up for the keep. That keep is at half health. There's Ancient Blessing just to try to get a little bit more damage in. Fresh absorbs the... Orb from Li Ming knows the target there for the Swift Strike. We see Dragon Blade, but immediately Diablo gets on top of Genji. We see the stun from Uther come out as well. Genji goes down. Lightning Breath and Anubarek is burnt to a crisp. Saber was thinking about making a move on the backside, but the quick work from RMU. Oh, they're going for it. There's the Hyperion. They're going to go for the core. They have a couple of fantastic heroes for core siege. Uh, Sonya doing her own little version of the Illidan. That's a 40% core. The Hyperion, as it will do lending the Yamato cannon to this core rush. The core is just melted. And a quick game RMU. from RMU. I, listen, this is a dirty team. That was that was that was brutal. They uh, act especially fast. Toronto came off of their last series in the quarterfinals looking very strong, uh, especially on their hammer comp. And RMU just didn't care. <laughs> 11-3, so, I mean, listen, we got to give Toronto a little bit of credit. Listen, they had a couple of bright moments in there. 
Um, listen, as opposed to the last game that I caught, which was, I believe it was almost 17 to four, but um, listen, shout outs in that game. Again, the master artist, Bob Ross, uh, with that Lee Ming is a hero that must be watched. I mean, resets galore. And then the Uther combo with Weave. Even though Weave did go down, I mean, that was, you know, the old ghost Uther play, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, try mm -hmm. to go try to go down, keep your teammates up. I mean, listen, they're on yeah, that point. Was, that, was, that, was, that was likely purposeful. Hmm. I mean, they are absolutely on point. All right. So, game one will go to RMU. This is a best of three set. Uh, just to keep in mind there. Uh, let's go so, ahead. Go ahead. If you're Toronto here, Bobo, hmm. do you try and take RMU to a specific map, or do you go for the first pick instead? And, like, what do you do to try and dismantle a team with so much synergy? I mean, if you have a cheese comp, you're in the semifinals. Like, it's, it would be the time to sort of break it out. Um, but when you... Listen, when you get hit in a game like that this bad... Keep the focus on the draft, you know, and that's my little mini piece of advice because try to figure out, you know, what was it about our comp that didn't quite work? Uh, for example, that, that Biotic Emitter fight, uh, is there another hero somewhere in the pool for University of Toronto that might have secured those three kills and maybe started the comeback a little bit there? Uh, you know, we talked mm -hmm. about Nubarek and Genji want to go forward. Hammer takes about an hour and a half to get anywhere on the map. So... <laughs> That was a little dicey in terms of the synergies there. Uh, we'll see uh, where these mm -hmm. teams want to go. In fact, we do have a lobby. And we'll go ahead and get updated here. And it looks like we are going to be heading on to Cursed Hollow. Mm. This is a map that can very quickly spiral out of control if your macro game isn't up to snuff with your opponents. This is a map that uh, Toronto does like, certainly. Yeah, we did see them there in the last game of their series in the quarterfinals. Uh, has Armu played this? I have not seen them do it. In fact, uh, Cursed Hollow was actually banned out. So, you know, it was not available in the pool uh, during the last set. And that was the first time that I had caught RMU. Um, I mean, listen, it's cursed. There's a lot of different plays that... You know, you could make here um, potentially some of the more macro-oriented heroes. Uh, globals certainly will uh, be a part of this draft in some way or another. Um, I'm trying to make sure we get everybody in the right spots. On the right teams. There we are. Captain 1, Captain 2. There we go. Okay. Yeah, if Toronto is going to bust out one of their slightly cheesier comps they have nothing to lose <laughs> at this point um they've got to be trying to bring this to a three game series hmm. they know that rmu team fights extraordinarily well maybe you try and work a blaze into your draft so you can attempt to bunker it i know that oh i'm sorry they didn't they didn't play uh Tyrael. they lost to a hmm. <laughs> uh with the sanct but something that can help mitigate a little bit of the team fight aggression and synergy on the side of RMU might be one of the tools they're missing to get them to the point where they can secure yeah. a couple of these low kills. You know, and another uh, little tidbit here, and this, um, I don't know, this is a, a bit of a risk, but just follow me here, is if you feel like you're down and you go to a map mm -hmm. such as Cursed Hollow, where you have a banked objective in the form of the tributes, uh, and you can play for a little bit of a long game, you know, sometimes it's actually worth a little bit of the risk to give tributes up. See if you can, you know, find a way to get your talent tier advantage through XP soak rather than team fighting. So I'm interested to mm -hmm. see if maybe there's an adaptation here. Uh, both teams are Tr ready. We'll head to our draft soon. Crow, go ahead, please. Toronto does does do that. They like they did that even on even on their whole mm. game. It was like we don't care about the first or third objective. We're just gonna let you channel out and do our own thing elsewhere <laughs> on the map and trying to equal value. And they did that with a Sylvanas. I'm not sure they'd be comfortable ripping a Sylvanas off against RMU. Uh, RMU, uh, RMU just has the look of, they're the kind of team, and this is just evident you know, early on, they identify a target, they know wh how they want to approach their team fight. If you, mm -hmm. if you break out something that's risky and squishy, I think it could wind up being a disaster. Yeah, that's exactly where my head is as well, Bobo. Mm. All right. 
I headed to Cursed Hollow. First pick over to RMU. The band's a little bit slower this time. They were pretty rapid fire in the, in the first game of the series. RMU, maybe... Curse is... It's just not a popular map anymore. Here's the Blaze. And there, there's the Blaze band. Put a little bit of a hamper on the use the bunker strategy I suggested. We get the Maya band. So Maya just doesn't quite exist here in this tournament. Um... That could also signal a preference for a first pick to Haka. We know that this is one of the best maps for the dinosaur. Hans, mm -hmm. Hanzo also is an issue here, and we did see it uh, yeah, I when would, I peeked I over your game. Hanzo. Yeah, at some somewhere in the draft. Listen, it may even be banned out. Do you do you ban a Malfoy when you have the first pick? Like, you can I, you can I, I, you can I, build I'd, around I'd say it. Worth. Yeah, it's, I'd say it's worth first picking a Hanzo, especially if the Hawk is not on the menu. I mean, there are a number of tanks that will do okay into Malthiel, if you will. There's the Hawk man. Okay, so all the tanks are actually on the board. That is a critical ban there. Yeah, it could be the Diablo first pick again here, and then nobody would fault them for it. With Taronda being removed, that also removes vision and scouting. But we do have Hanzo as well as Genji available, and the Hanzo-Genji interplay um, is tough. Yeah, there is the Hulk coming back in. <laughs> I mean, if you if you rip the Hanzo and the Genji is still available, you you can anticipate that it'll be counterpick. There's ooh, Abby and Grey Hmm. All right, that is a little bit of a risk to me. They're banking on early game not being too snowbally against them. There's the Hanzo. And the Tyrael, so it's an off... And they have the Sanct. An offlane Tyrael. Uh, don't be too sure of that, because... Is it going to be Judgment? <laughs> in Game 1 on Tomb of the Spider Queen, yes, Robert Morris went with a main tank Tyrael in that setup, and they did pull Judgment out. And here's where Judgment makes sense. You only mm -hmm. have four possible targets on the other side. And one of them, in fact, is a Grey Mane. Greymane mm -hmm. does not do well against that kind of setup. There's another global ban. Um, Especially when on the, on the heels of the Judgment, you also are coming in. Yes. You know, and, and yeah. listen, there's not a, there's not a ton of, of supports that are going to do very well against Judgment. You actually have to dip into your hero pool and maybe think about something along the, uh, along the lines of Uther. Um, there is the Zeratul ban, which we know that Ember on Toronto does play Zeratul, specifically on Cursed Hollow. They're running There's the support the list, and they actually pick up the Genji as well. This is just... Okay. All right, Toronto. Just we'll going. see what they do. So what they did on Volskaya running this comp was they had Arthas offlane and just slow down rotations as much as he could. I didn't even say offlane, because there wasn't, like, the offlane, I suppose, had Greymane and Sylvan right. in it, and they just ran Sylvan Greymane as hard as they could into whatever structures were available to them and ignored the objective. Rhaegar makes an appearance. The uh, orcs make some very strong eye statements. <laughs> <laughs> What's so we anticipate the Arthas here? Was that was that what uh, the previous comp? I don't know if it would be as effective for them on Cursed Hollow as on Volskaya. Volskaya is a much smaller map. I don't know if he'd live through. Yeah, I like the Murrayan better. In sort of, if they're going to be doing the same sort of thing where they're using the tank to try and stop rotations. Murden's a little bit safer. Than Arthas. Arthas can't really get away from <laughs> cooldown Diablo. Ten seconds left. Okay, so a an interesting play with the supportless Abathur composition on the side of the University of Toronto. But again, I, I gotta I gotta say this looks like an insta jib sort of setup. You've got Diablo just doing Diablo things. Hanzo with the Dragon mm -hmm. Arrow with the Judgment follow up. Um, you know, you've got Rhaegar and Gul'dan, so you've got Wave Clear, but you've also, you know, you're adding even a little bit more Merc uh, Clear uh, and Capture with the Rhaegar, who we don't see a lot of Rhaegar. Makes mm -hmm. sense here on Cursed Hollow. Uh, he can operate quite independently in the jungle. Uh, the other the other thing to note is that part of the success that Toronto was seeing with this comp was due to the fact that uh, Ember on Genji was able to pick off the Mage of the opposing team, so they weren't able to come with the wave clear and oppose this honest. Mm. Assuming that uh, Robert Morris doesn't allow Gul'dan to just die in 1v1s, uh, they might struggle a little bit more 
uh, to get as much value out of the the Sylvanas push, because Grayman will be there. Not Grayman. Gulban will be there to uh, clear the waves again. So. All right. On the side of the University of Toronto, with this supportless Abathur play here on Cursed Hollow, Keep Six will be playing the Abathur. Fresh on the Muradin, Ember will be playing Genji. Ikea will be playing the Sylvanas and Saber on the Greninja. And on the blue team for Robert Morris, coming hot off a game one victory on Volskaya, we have Noah once again on that Diablo. Oh no, not once again on the Diablo. He was the, the Sonya last time. Yes. Noah on Diablo. Bob Ross on the Hanzo. Bob Weave on the Rhaegar. Bob Chef is coming in with the Corruption Stacks. <laughs> and Bob Mage already doing a little bit of poke and trade and scout into Toronto. They're back in. Diablo's there. Not going to go for the kills here, but they're training a lot of damage on the Fresh. Not going to matter in the grand scheme of things because it is a Murid and already healing back up with that trait. But Army was showing that they are here to party. Quite a few stacking talents. We do see uh, Gul'dan moving into the Corruption quest and Hanzo moving into Simple Geometry. Keep an eye on this. So the question on my mind is, what do you do with the Sylvanas Grey main comp if they send the wave clear against you? <laughs> and just follow the Sylvanas and Grey main around with the wave clear. I mean, what it'll... do you get on the map? Like I said, they're going to have to make a decision about the tributes. And, and for Toronto, like, maybe the idea is that they don't necessarily go all in. Noah under pressure here. Keep an eye on Diablo. He's got a little bit of a long way to go for the wall. Flip onto Muradin. That doesn't quite help. The body blocks are there. And first blood really goes over to Toronto. Blocking. Nice play by Fresh. There. The help with the hat from Keep 6. And Big Red goes down first. Hanzo is off on the siege camp for RMU. See, this is the spot where, okay, now we have Sylph Greyman. What kind of chip damage can we get? The tower's already gone uh, on the bottom half of this wall. Sylph shuts down the top one. And there that is now. With Tyrael not having any hard CC, not sure he's going to have much of an opportunity to get a chase down kill here. That's the small little bits of experience that Toronto need to get this large mm -hmm. lead. Noah is once again under pressure in the mid lane here from Fresh stun. and Ember. There's a Dwarf Toth, and they're going for the body block again. I don't think they're going to be able to find the kill this time, but he is forced to walk away didn't have Does hat in that tap. situation mm. but diablo I, struggling we see keep slide on out with the slug there's the intercepted rotation as Rhaegar trying to slow down murden as well as genji the swift strike does miss and now toronto will have to clear this camp up again teams just trade chip damage level fours for both sides There's no towers in the bottom lane here. This is just free damage. Greymane has gone Eyes in the Dark to the stealth rather than physical armor. Also, shield build for Rhaegar. Interesting. Hanzo has an opportunity to chase down here. Bob Ross will be nearly there for Sylv. Just misses the Sonic Arrow. Saber with a stealth. Wow. Negated by the Sonic Arrow. <laughs> And we do see Mines in the bush there, ready to catch Bob Ross's rotation. Fresh in the top lane, going for the stall here. Does oh. find Bob Weave. Genji is there with the Swift Strike hat on him. Bob Weave is going to just barely get away. And now Ember is the one under fire there as Noah and Bob Chef chase him. Going to back off and reset the fight over the first objective. Still making appearance. Has joined the party, which is unusual. Oh. We do see them frequently. Go down. Haunting wave. And they get the spike burst from Abathur, and it is enough to secure the kill on the Gul'dan. Sylph has the channel as RMU backs off into the Grey Main. No one now, once again, on this Diablo, under fire, has the shadow charge, gets the stun, no overpower. Yet 100 oh. health, and it is enough again. Wow. Keep got away with 30 hit points. <laughs> that, uh, just a lot of crazy trades all over this map, but Toronto is up 3-0 on RMU. Uh, this is unorthodox. Running supportless Abathur with Sylvanas. It's again. Apparently, it's a thing. Comp. Hey, they this like is, it. This man. is their comp. And listen, sometimes you just find you know that sort of weird thing that you just enjoy. We do see Greymane showing up here to put pressure onto the Rhaegar. Uh, I, I haven't seen RMU quite this rattled. Uh, they had an easy go of it in the quarterfinals, but they have a lot of targets that are susceptible to not just the Genji, but the Genji hat combo. And I think that's <laughs> what is really being the issue for them. They they feel like they can hang out a little bit. Oh, Ember went uh, in. Actually, almost look at that. Stall. Might still pick up Bob Ross. Wow. Knights are along. Fresh is there just in case Ember needs the help. They find Noah once again skulking around. 
Ember has the hat, getting healed up by that Abathur, Gul'dan, and Marigar coming in. Look at the in mines. The Look at the mines. <laughs> <laughs> Did Diablo walk on in? Maybe not. Fresh trying to get the delay. Looks like it won't be there. Double channel from Weave and Mage. Uh, Toronto, during the downtime, chose to pick up their own kip, and they have sent their siege specialist combo up to the top. Yeah. Solanus also has possession. She grabs the range minions and just really what crashes is... into forts with it. This is okay. This is just a weird old school way to play hots. <laughs> That's... I, I personally, I personally love watching this. They're gonna try and slow it down with the ring oh, or with the design, or with think... the wave clear. Sylvia is haunting away. Solanus is in danger. Now the bottom lane, Ow. Diablo goes down. I can't keep up with this. They are all <laughs> over the map. We've got two. So we've got two just great little roaming squads. We've got Fresh and Ember looking to find kills. They pick it up on the Diablo. Meanwhile, on the top, that's one auto attack away from uh, the top yeah. fort finished off. Fresh and Ember and uh, Akia and uh, Saber are just so in sync with each other and the way they're making plays across the map. And the Abathur is just sort of the glue that is keeping everything together. He's grabbing the soak that's crashing in. He has the heals for the dangerous plays. And now but we see RMU go for a boss. Mm, and they've got a, they have a very nice boss ripping, ripping comp, if you will. Uh, Rhaegar just does incredibly well in these situations, particularly when he is not under pressure. RMU goes for the boss. Fresh channeling in the top lane. This will be two tributes for Toronto. Sylvanas will be there to... No, she's going to back off and go pick up the siege. Nope, she's going to stay. Okay, she's baiting me. <laughs> Greymane is definitely doing the siege camp. They are together probably going to try and defend the boss while Ember finishes off the top fort. Uh, Fresh and Ember at this point will be rotating on the top half of the map. Um, maybe looking once they need to catch the Diablo out while the Sylvanas and the Greymane act again together in the bot lane to clean up the boss. It reminds me very much of like a hammer and anvil style comp. Where, in this game, uh, Toronto was, are the ones a step or two ahead in the macro rotation, as opposed to RMU's domination on Volskaya. Level 10's online for Toronto. Avatar go for the Throat Dragon Blade, the clone, of course. And we and do get the Wailing arrow. arrow. I wasn't sure if it, I wasn't sure if this went so far as a, as a mind control game. <laughs> it's mind control? No, Wailing, if Wailing Arrow comes out before Haunt does, it's devastating for Gul'dan. 10s online now for RMU. This is Curse uh, Tribute for Toronto. Horrify, Dragon's Arrow, Lightning Breath, Ancestral Healing, Tyrael Holding. Like I said, this was Judgment on Tomb. And they might be giving this up to go rip their own boss. Genji is going to be there not quite in time for the stall. But now they now Toronto knows that the rotation is coming through here. We see Genji on the back line already de just trying to stop Gul'dan, Hanzo, and company from getting through. Fresh should have jumped, but this is a long way to go. Fresh is going to have to pop the Avatar. He gets did. the Corruption Stacks on him. Takes that E, gets the Overpower into the wall. And that is the end of Fresh. Oh, so Honest and Greymane oh, boy. the boss. And they're going to have to blow Ultimate Evolution just as he oh! gets Dragon Arrow there. Almost picks up Sylvanas and Greymane. Boss is captured just in the nick of oh. time, but Sylvanas goes down as well to the Rhaegar Bite. Just as the next tribute starts to spawn in the top lane, Ultimate Evolution will not be available for this tribute phase. <laughs> what a sequence. The clone eats the Dragon Arrow, which knocks out Greymane. Sylvanas with a cap on the boss, however. She dies to the Puppy Bite from Rhaegar. We've just barely getting the Feral Lunge in. Oh boy. All right. Wow. So, uh, like, this with, should be cursed for RMU. It should. However, without boss on the map, Hanzo actually has to chase down uh, this golem in the top lane. It's fairly weak. RMU does have a little bit going in the top lane. Okay, no, that giant does wind up going down. But eyes on the bot lane as Ember has found Tyrael well out. We do see Greymane. This is a go for the throat. Greymane. Trying Greymane to follow. Is on. The he has that dark flight. Has the Ember hat. Pops go for the throat just to stick to the Tyrael. Gonna give himself the movement speed, disengage forward. Cyber agility may be available for Genji. Wait Might for be looking the for the E. almost there. And they're not gonna quite secure it. It's it's curse for RMU, but would you really know it's it? Sylvanas for Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look so, at this. They uh, only a fort is captured in the top lane, and that forces all of the backs from RMU. There's Dragon, Dragon Arrow. Arrow on there. Boy. Oh, the Horrify followed up by the Sanct. What a fantastic play. Sylvanas dying to poison. 
Another big dragon arrow coming out from Bob Ross. Greymane does go down. Lightning Breath will slow down Murden for a hot minute. And we do see Bob Ross trying to track down the dwarf. Needs a hat. Needs a trait. There's Avatar. Needs a toss. Gets it over the wall. May get away here. Keeping an eye on Avatar there. Does. You know, keep is going ahead and grabbing a lot of the soap that's coming in. So, we're back to just about square one. As RMU will move to eliminate the last fort on the side of Tehran. In fact, they're actually a little ahead in terms of the structural advantage. Uh, the, the clumping on the dragon arrows. That will be the adaptation. Because Toronto has played flawlessly with the exception of just eating those big stuns. Not only did you get the stun, you got an on-point uh, horrified Boss right on top of it. about to be up for RMU. If they do decide to rip it after the Knights, it will be threatening keep. Tyrael making an appearance. Sword of Justice. Okay, wormhole for tanks. You know, I love Tyrael, and I, I just love seeing this talent now. Uh, I might have to abuse it in scrims. Just a, just a warning. Okay. Uh, Night Camp has been picked up by both sides. Diablo does sniff out a Muradin. Dragon, Dragon Arrow this arrow time misses. Out and wide, which is actually very, very huge for Toronto. They might be able to find an opportunity to fight now. Fresh oh, does no. not have Slow a fort. Material. Nowhere to go. But, here's this. Yeah, they are going to attempt to backdoor the... No, they're going to back off. No, no, no. no. They oh, go, boy. Okay, we're going to be down here. We want this keep because the team's top. But their boss just respawned. The RMU comes down and does their boss. While we attempt to backdoor the keep, we are not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, with the Hanzo, and just taking a quick peek at the Hanzo stack, this is full W build. He is all finished up uh, on the Scattered Arrow build. You see RMU, they're going to back off. Looks like they want to get to 16. There are two bank tributes on the side of Toronto. And this is, like, this sometimes sort of complication that you can run into in Curse. A lot of times you get ahead early, you pick up your two tributes, and if you're like Toronto, despite losing in the mid-game... Any team fight that you win will potentially unlock the curse, the objective. And I'm not going to lie, I feel like if, if Toronto does wind up uh, in a position where they have a curse, I think they're just going to run it down. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're going to be what I expect. They're going to try and trade this curse away and go for keep chip, maybe even full keep. I've got fresh there. Gray Man jumps in. Saber makes the call. Sylvanas is shutting everything down. Keeping an eye back here. There are three backs. Hanzo does not. Clone available. There's the Dragon's Arrow. We There's gotta keep an eye on this one. Coming on the top lane. You can hear the call is made. It field goals right between everybody. Sylvanas trying to get out. Keep has already dropped the clone, but Sylvanas does not have enough to get out. Ooh, that Horrify came in right in the middle of the Dwarf Toss. On the backside, Genji goes down. No clone, no help. And Mage on the Tyrael will pick up the Tribute. It does seem like this is starting to fall apart a little bit for Toronto. Like you did point out earlier, though, all they need is that one good team fight. And they just have so much available to them. They can rain a little bit, stop making... A, well, I'd consider these cheeky plays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're, they're, especially into the Hanzo. So they're threatening these cheeky plays, but they need to just get the back and then leave. And mm -hmm. and that's been the issue, is that we can see that Rubber Morris is you know, sort of keyed into it. Wow, look at this boss get ripped down. There will be no contest up here. When they get the chip damage on the fort, back off. And then put the focus back on the tribute. They may have some success, but they've been sticking around for quite a while. Um, and listen, it's Sylv. Uh, if you miss the haunting wave, you know, escape, Diablo is going to find you. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're going for it again. Sylvan Grey Mane. They've got a boss barreling down. This could be top this, keep. If, if Armu keep? finds either Genji or Murden here, this could be game with a full health boss and Sylvanas and Grey Mane not present. Uh, we got a base race. Toronto needs to make sure that they don't race. back. They're on core. No one is backing. There's the Daryl is out. There's the Tyrael backing. We've got a Grey Mane clone. Clone Saber needs to dodge this. Core. Dragon arrow. 50. Oh. I think Toronto has this. 30. Yeah, they do. A gray main on a cord with a Sylvanas' <laughs> game. <laughs> what? He just backdoored it. Why not? He just ran it. Oh, GG, Bobs. <laughs> they never had the opportunity I to back. that happened. <laughs> it's actually how they won on Volskaya, too. They got to the point of the game, they just backdoored with gray main and clone. That's the, I, that's the Toronto special. Oh, man. Um... <laughs>
<laughs> hey, you know what? We got a game three, and in my book, that's really all that matters. Uh, just yeah. a wonky comp and persistence from Toronto. Uh, it, it certainly looks like the Bobs thought that they could have maybe picked up a kill or two, and then maybe, you know, uh, they needed space to back. They've done the traditional, like, keep or core play if they'd gotten a kill or two. Uh, they, need, they needed space in order to back it. They didn't get it. Um, mm -hmm. I think they had to know at some point uh, that Sylvanas and Greymane are just too powerful. Greymane's, you know, Greymane and Illidan and Sonya, best types of heroes you can you can have, the best single target DPS. We also saw a keep break out the monstrosity there. Uh, that's a wild affair. I want to take a look at the Civ build. Oh, we already have our lobby up, so we're going to have to make this quick. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> that, listen, it's neat. Yes, it, I, it, I like it. It is, it is QQ, Sylvanas, into possession, into the Wailing Arrow, which we, I don't think she ever used. I don't think Wailing Arrow was ever cast. And then uh, Windrunner for I, I, QQ. I, I, agree. I, I absolutely agree. I don't think it was... Head Remorseless. So that's just... Take your remorseless uh, double E, and then the uh, overflowing or yes. withering barrage gives you a lot of burn on your auto attack. Oh, that's just a wild affair. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, hey, there we go. All right, we do have our lobby up. Uh, right, we hop in. are headed to Dragonshire. Ooh, I have actually not seen the Dragonshire yet in the tournament. No, I mean, this is one of the more complicated maps in the map pool. Um, I'm very interested in... And this was actually RM, uh, excuse me, RMU taking the pick because it looks like uh, they went for map pick over first pick. Go ahead and add me to the, uh, to the lobby. Can I, though? i got to figure this out. Hold on. This is always weird. Uh, people don't know in the tournament realm, uh, when you don't have your hero level, it's hard to whisper people. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There you go. All, All right. right, so 1-1, one, one, game three for the semifinals on D-Shire. Uh, wow. Okay. So my, my mind immediately goes to what weird comp can Toronto try to run on this? I don't, I don't think Solana's grand would work here because mid lane and bot lane are so close to each other. No, I mean, it's listen, it's it's perfectly acceptable to run um, gray main here. Abathur is... I bet there's a hero on Dragon Shard that you can use. You can run supportless. It's, I mean, it's tough. But Abathur does get value on Dragon Shire. He just forces you into a little bit more of a late game, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the way that he uh, winds up being built. But with this being RMU's uh, choice for map, I'm interested to see if maybe they have a different idea. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I believe they're thinking Diablo still. They love Diablo. This hmm. is probably Diablo's best map. I'm not sure we're going to see Genji make it through again. <laughs> but, uh, as we did see in your set, uh, Ember plays a pretty mean Zeratul, and uh, this is a pretty good Zeratul map. Yeah, absolutely. We'll just go ahead and flash. Uh, let's yeah. take a peek at the summary up here. So, uh, Toronto brought us to the first two maps, Volskaya as well as Cursed Hollow, where the series was split. And for game number three, Robert Morris has chosen to take us to Dragonshire. All right, RMU is ready. We're just waiting on Toronto to give us our R buttons. Chat, what is going on? Thank you for joining us. We have seen teams uh, use several different strategies to win on D Shire. We're going to be heading to the draft in just a Yes. But I'm going to be interested to see if Toronto's adaptation is favor one of the strategies that really looks to punish the offlane more so than control mid bot. That seems more their speed to me than the tr super traditional approach. Hmm. I, 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 I just I don't. Ember on Zera tool. I know I don't. I, be, after you, after you, after you finish a game up like that, uh, uh, just it's kind of like all bets are off. Um, <laughs> Anything could happen. Seriously, we could just wind up having a very standard, bland meta draft, or Toronto maybe just breaking out. You know, maybe they got one more trick up their sleeve here. We are one game away from the finals, game number three in the semifinals. It's actually the number two seed versus the number three seed. Oh, maybe just not quite yet. <laughs> we do have the CC, it looks like. Uh, or teams wrong draft. Isis says, don't start game three. In fact, hold on one hot second. Uh, I may lose you. Hold on one sec. Let's see what's going on here. Oh. Okay. We have a little bit of delay. Okay. Are they trying to sync up the uh... bracket? I'll, I'll just be quiet. It's not a quite a problem. Or I could ramble. Oh, yeah, it's fine. We're, we'll just keep our maps selected up. Uh, say hey to chat. 
Um, Hi, chat. What do you think of the crazy, crazy game? <laughs> it's been a long what time since I, I've mm -hmm. seen I've seen Sylv. We see Sylv like an unranked, and and you're just like frothing at the mouth because it's Sylvanas. Um, mm. But he is Sylv. Very aggressive, and we actually see a lot of. There are some stalwart Sylvanas main who uh, run that build and run her in Diamond and Master. They're Grandmaster Sylph mains. Uh, so she is a hero that, when played correctly, <laughs> or in in acknowledgement of her weaknesses as well as her strengths, I think you can people get a lot of value out of. And I'm kind of scared about her rework because of that. Um, traditionally, rework heroes come to dominate the meta for just a little bit. Yes. Uh, I, you know, we, uh, well, I mean, if we go back and we, we take a look at, you know, the, the field of reworks that have come through recently, uh, and we talked about this actually fairly recently, the last time we had a rework that you could consider to be like a failure uh, was the Chromie rework. You know, every other rework has launched that hero towards the top of the meta. Um, so Stitches and Sylvanas are next up. And mm -hmm. uh, and I think, what, what was the note at BlizzCon that I heard? Uh, we want to uh, buff Sylvanas to match her power level in WoW. Yeah, mm. yeah that's... Mm. <laughs> I mean, it, listen, we it, uh, Sylvanas' trait has long uh, been the bane of many a player's existence. So I, I certainly expect there to be some sort of change there, particularly with the way that the 2019 gameplay updates are going to affect play. Um, so this could be a hyper carry Sylvanas, you know, maybe she gets turned into some sort of auto attack hero. Maybe they, they up the poison damage. I have no idea. I, yeah, I have no idea what they could possibly do. I'm interested. Um, uh, I'm also interested in the stitches, uh, rework as well. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm terrified. You know that, you know that I'm scared of stitches, Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he's not a super meta tank, it suits me quite fine. Uh, I'm worried about how strong he may be after his own rework. Because we might actually see a Stitches come out. Um, he's a hero that a lot of people turn to when they get late into a series and they need to shake things up mm. or just do something different to keep their opponents off of balance. If you've never shown a Stitches, you're just ripping one suddenly out of nowhere and running a pit comp can throw a lot of teams off balance. Because like similar to the Kel'Thuzad, when, you're, when your team is drafted correctly and you've built a composition around the Stitches, you only need that one hook to really turn the outcome of a game, especially late game. We'll have to see. A little bit of a pause here. We're just going to kind of hang out. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just take a peek and see what's going on on the flip side. Yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring up your own chat so I, I can see. I do see Cal Poly Pomona right now has a 1-0 lead over Rutgers. Uh, Cal Poly Pomona, the one seed. Uh, Rutgers is the four, I do believe. Cal Poly Pomona made a heck of a run last season. Uh, they made it all the way to the final uh, four, in fact. Mm -hmm. Where they did eventually fall uh, to Buffalo. Um, so listen, this is a... In fact, they've got Katazan Core right now. Uh, that's over on Bahamut Gaming Stream. So, um, again, this is the Tespa Collegiate Series. This is the preseason setup. Uh, there were seven weeks of the regular season, and here in week eight, we are uh, finishing things up with the fall finale, where 64 teams uh, were entered into the bracket based on those rankings. Uh, and then we just wound up working our way through all of these best of three sets. Yep, single elimination all the way up to the bracket. We're almost done. Just taking. Who a do you, up. who do you favor to? Uh... I mean, I I thought RMU was certainly the team to beat, but uh, maybe Toronto has just sort of ruffled their <laughs> feathers a little bit. Just a little bit, taking at least a map off. Extremely <laughs> unexpected. Uh. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a time. I mean, who else have you seen? You know, this weekend that sort of maybe stood out to you. Maybe even not the teams that are still here, because don't forget we've got the spring set up. Um, so mm -hmm. listen, we got a long season up ahead of us. Uh, honestly, I haven't really been disappointed with any of the teams I've seen starting the top four. I think all of them are very close to exceptionally solid heroes play. Mm. Uh. One person that I'm going to, I know I'm going to keep my eye on uh, during the spring season is going to be 
He's from go- Colorado. Is he, oh, or a voice for the vice. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you cut out a little <laughs> bit there. Yes, Colorado School of Mines. That's a team that we're very familiar with. Um, Crow and I are both uh, amateur casters uh, for the NA scene. So we have some like different interactions with some of these teams. We know uh, many of these players from um, not just casting them in amateur leagues, but we played with them a bunch. Um, mm-hmm. I was very happy to see uh, my friend Mockery in University of Houston make the top eight. They've been working hard. Uh, try to see some other teams that um, that we've lined up. Well, yeah, I mean, for I'm I'm, sc- I'm scared to play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't really want to deal with that in Heroes Lounge. Uh, yeah. because they've got some neat ideas. Uh, who else? We did get to see uh, Kentucky, uh, the University of Kentucky, the Square and Four Triangles throughout the NGS season. That's a team mm-hmm. on the rise. They've been doing some good things as well. Uh, happy to uh, see my alma mater play pretty pretty that's true man you, that's really cool getting to cast them yes i did not yeah. get to cast yukon who uh, unfortunately got knocked out a little early this weekend um but yeah and then lpi guy uh let's see and then for heroes lounge there's a couple of teams that are entered um specifically as college teams like and texas a&m is another one that we you know we've had interactions with in many different setups a&m is uh just really one of the good examples of like just how to take a team that you know maybe was off people's radar um Mm -hmm. and then uh you know just work your way up through the amateur scene they play in every single tournament um uh, that they can i've seen them in open div every every single one i've seen them i've seen them absolutely yes um yeah all that all that practice eventually pays off (laughs) all right so it looks like we're good we got this issue solved uh we'll get the draft ink uh, shortly. Thank you to our admins for helping us out to clarify just one or two things. Okay, that's what happened. Um, all right. Let's make sure the teams are R. We get the call. Let's get this Both game going. Ready. Here we go. All right. Game Let's number three. To the draft on Dragonshire. So we were talking about this earlier. We don't think Genji makes it through. I would be really surprised if Diablo made it through. I feel like mm. trying to get uh, the Bobs off of off of that Diablo might be effectual for them because the synergy between uh, between the tank and Weave are, is just phenomenal. Uh, the support follow up is always there with the tank. We do have a little bit uh, of a mix up though, as Toronto has their first pick for this map. There is the Haka band out. Not a huge surprise. Probably, you know, among the top three maps for Dahaka. Especially once you get to I level don't... seven, once you get Feeding Frenzy going. I mean, you can make so many different plays with him. My have is banned out, but I'm not actually sure if Toronto plays my have. Because they're, they're usually the ones banning it. It's, I, it looks like the type of hero that Robert Morris just identifies as, you know, maybe being at the top of the meta. And maybe they don't have a Maya. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but that can sometimes happen. You know, again, we, I've talked about my, um, pretty much at length, again, a near 100% participation rate at BlizzCon. And, you know, teams that pay attention to the pro scene, you know, know her power level. Um, and this is, I, I mean, listen, we're, we're an amateur team together. I've told you my draft strategy on Dragonshire. You first pick Maya every time she's up. Um, you know, she has all of the tools for this map. But we do get Zeratul banned out, and we do get Blaze taken away. This is going to be a very shallow pool in the off lane. That is a Mayor's first hammer. pick, Sergeant Hammer. That seems uh, being punished to me. Uh, yes. Uh, our painterly. Are we going to see the main? Our painterly friend Bob Ross. Uh, perhaps looking his chops. But do you rip the leaming already? I think they grabbed Diablo here. Nope, they're no. gonna change it up. They go Chromie to Ronda. Yeah, Chromie has received incremental buffs, right? The rework came through. Uh, she was trashed here, and then just very slowly and steadily, she's kind of rose back up. Um, and now she's, I think Perfect. she's at a, I, I think she's at a, well, I think she's at a fair place where you have to be a good Chromie, you know, in order to use her. Yes, yes. Uh, if, if you're a good Chromie, she's extremely powerful. If you're bad at Chromie, she's pretty terrible. But there is a Hefe Garrosh. Harry Gary comes out with the Deckard Kane. So we have the Anubarak and the Genji, but I like this because it is much more defensive in nature. Mm-hmm. In fact, I believe this is what they ran uh, in Cursed Hollow with the Garrosh and the Kane. 
In fact, we'll throw Could up... Could have been Ana uh, that game? No, it was, it was Ana that game. We'll throw, up the, uh, we'll throw up the Garrosh stats here from HGC. Once again, these stats uh, brought to you by uh, Stats of the Storm. As well, uh, we have tapped into the HGC Phase 2. So the stats that we are pulling up are from the North America, Europe, and Korean setup. There's the Illidan ban. Toronto Again. hates Illidan, and I'm not quite sure why. They just don't like globals. Uh, Tyrael Urel. There's the, yeah, there's that Tyrael. I'm not... I'm not sure if that's Judgment or Sanct. I think Sanct could be strong here. If they're confident in the mm. ability to force the hammer out, though, I could see a very, very Judgment. And I, and I say that uh, uh, just because, you know, oh boy. Oh boy, this draft just got crazy. <laughs> I warned you they had a Viking. I didn't want to say it in draft. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if you don't know how Vikings get played on Dragonshire, if this is done well, you are in for a treat. Um, the Lost Vikings on Dragonshire started, and this is way back in Alpha Beta, as in sort of like an off-lane special. Um, Shad, who right now is playing for World 20, uh, was, in, in my opinion, just the, the, the best at this. You take, uh, you take Baylog, then you run him in between top fort and top keep and interrupt the wave, and then you've got Eric and Olaf just dancing around up in the top lane, just being a nuisance. And the idea is that the Vikings will wind up delaying all of your rotations on up. Oh, we got to switch that screen real quick. Get back on the call on Discord. Hey, there we go. <laughs> um, right. And um, uh, and it's it's just something that can be very very difficult to deal with in the top lane, particularly if you cannot kill the Vikings repeatedly and quickly. They'll die, right? But but Urel doesn't scream Viking killer to me. They may make the the adapt ad adaptation. Maybe the gray words are difficult. Maybe the gray That's what I'm getting to. Is I think if they wanted to, they could send gray off to act that roll if they so desired hmm. this is uh, okay but it is odd and i don't see now i, I don't know which which heroic tyrael goes whatsoever <laughs> speaking of tyrael mage is on this ooh, look at that skinnergy on that on the tyrael weave will be playing the taronda noah on the urel bob ross jumping on the gray main and bob chef on the chromie for the red side for Toronto, breaking out their signature. We don't want a team fight comp. We have Saber on the Zarya, Ember on the Vikings. Going top lane already. We have uh, Ikea already, or again on the Sergeant Hammer. Fresh on the Garage and Keep mm. on the Deckard Kane. In fact, they're going to split their Vikings up. This isn't quite the, the Shad Vikings, if you will. Um, but four man, and we need to talk about it. There's a Zarya here. And yeah, this is just. This is a four-man Zarya split Yeah, comp. and you just, you don't see Zarya often, and sometimes Zarya can just, you know, take a team, and, and in addition to the Vikings, it just throws you off your guard. It's a different hero to play against. You've got to watch for different cooldowns. Uh, the Zarya level one, she actually went into Demolitions Expert, so we've got a Q build thus far. What I would be concerned about if I were Toronto is that Greyman, if he can get onto the structures, races better. Then I think the hammer four man does. So he's got half a tower. Hammer's got a wall. So far the four man's winning. We have uh, both of our Vikings. We see Ember playing it plucky here with Eric and Olaf in the mid lane. How far does Toronto push? Do they just oh, go like... until somebody stops them? <laughs> I think so. That's that's kind of what you do on Zarya four man. Uh, way back when it was Vogue to run Zario, uh, you just you just go to core. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Zariel. That was so good. Fresh there on the Garrus with a flip onto Tyrael. Eric has gone down. Unfortunately, uh, our, our smallest, our most frail of the Vikings is the first kill. <laughs> Greymane does pick up the siege camp in the bot lane. He's going to try to get in there with the mercenaries to help Maybe. equalize the pressure. In fact, he and Urel also are... going for bruisers. Yeah, yeah, I think this is the right call. The double camp push on bottom uh, will have to be responded to. Vikings cannot deal with that. I don't think either team is really going to have much of an opportunity to capture a dragon without a number of kills. Uh, just because yeah. of the, the dominance in top lane just can't be answered. And meanwhile, you've got Urel and Greymane, who are obviously going to be doing uh, good work in tandem. Oh, I spoke too soon! Wow. The Vikings managed to sneak it. 
Baylog was not respected so, on his stance on the point. Toronto and can, Eric goes ahead and hops right in. Toronto's going to... They have every opportunity to snowball this game. They do have to worry about bottom. Graymane's going to pick up this fort very easily. We do see Olaf trying to make a move down there, but... I, I mean, top fort is Olaf gone. not renowned for his wave clear. Zarya has been at full energy near this entire game. This is bottom fort about to fall to the double mercenary push. Yeah. You see the double merc push. is down there as well. And this is how you're supposed to respond to hammer pushes. You just race them on the other side of the map. And we're keeping an eye up because we do see hammer. There's the back. We caught it out of the corner of the eye. There's even more backing. We do see fresh. Everybody retreating out. So it's top fort for bottom fort and probably the wall. Dragon out. Does he get out? Eric, once again, being chased. Okay. Gets out there. Bottom does get clean up. Most of the wall is gone. So the calculated risk by Toronto pays off for the dragon, but the double camp push on bottom from Greymane, uh, just too much to handle. But now the imbalance comes in uh, to effect. We do start to see Ember make the adjustment. We've got Vikings now up in the top lane where they have a lot of safety and the four man pivots into bot lane. Greymane picks yeah. up that camp. And we're jumping onto Olaf. And I do want to mention, we have seen Toronto be more than happy to give up uh, objective pressure or early game camp pressure or what have you to get the map set up in the way that they want for the execution of their strategy. So if it suits them to now have the four man in bot lanes, so they have this camp control. This might have been their ultimate goal, because the top lane is so open now, the Vikings should have a relatively easy time uh, either soaking it or controlling top objective. Trying to keep an eye on the race as it comes through. The wall is going on one side, but Greymane has already gotten to a fort. He is in worgen form, and the Greninja going to work. Chromie just shelling away. That's 28 stacks on Sandblast. She does it have her heroic now. Remember, no cleanse, although into the fray, I guess, can. I'm interested if this is slowing Sands or Loop. And there's the Sands. That is Greymane on keep wall now with the Night Camp. They're going to have to respond to this again. Toronto can't afford to lose a keep in the strategy. Vikings can't hold that. And they are electing to stay. Are they just going to attempt to go for the core? <laughs> One Viking is up there. Uh, the Mage Minion is gone, however, Urel. Uh, we'll be providing the Goomba Stomp armor uh, as we move into the Avenging Wrath build here. I mean, going to keep falling. Yep. I'm not so sure about this. I mean, with a comp like this. Tens are picked up with the keep going down. I expect to see an immediate response here. Keep an eye on uh, the potential three, maybe four man, if you will, uh, for RMU. They're holding their talents. <laughs> okay, Baylog, goodbye. I'm getting pinged out. Sacred ground! That makes sense to me. If you're just trying to stand there and uh, mm. counter siege and or push with Greymane, like we've seen Greymane just backdoor core, yes. right? If he's there with Urel and Urel tanking sacred ground, it's it's going to be enough. Also, really, Greyman what to heal himself. What are you going to absorb with Ardent Defender in this situation, right? You want the armor Nothing. against Zarya and Hammer. It, again, quick adaptation makes sense. Starfall, we do get Sanked. We've also got Noah being dealt with uh, by the plucky Eric. In fact, Urel needs to be careful. Okay. Hey, do we get an actual team fight? No. Up in the top lane, Olaf has picked off that shrine. The gray man go with, but we get Cursed Bullet for Bob Ross. And that will do quite a number to Garrosh. And his ability to sort of step forward and be the threat to keep people off of Hammer. If you just stand there and you just eat a bullet immediately, it's a little bit riskier to stick around. We do see uh, Robert Morris once again securing both of the shrines. Vikings not quite able to. Uh, they control. are 10. Yeah, Olaf is heading top. There Here's is Indomitable. Fight. Starfall gets launched. We shall stay a while and listen in the middle of that as well. This is BFG Hammer. What's that Zarya level 10? Oh, we do have the Expulsion, the expulsion zone. zone. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping for Graviton Surge. I just like it. Into what? I don't know. <laughs> if you're going to meme, go all, go all for it. Uh, <laughs> we see Fresh trying to make the move up. Chromie already 
with the repeat on, on uh, excuse me, on her Sands Quest. Baylog does go down. You see the Vikings buy back in. Greymane converting already... bottom shrine. Keep an eye on Ember. We do get Expulsion Zone, just to try to get some zone away. Fresh is trying to make it through here. He's got a long way to go. Saber might go down. Greymane trying to get there. We see the shield, the Indomitable, as well as the taunt comes out. It's not enough. Garrosh goes down, as does Zarya. And now our... Sh should be Shrine Secure. Yes. Now, well, now they got to play the dance, right? You got Olaf here. Well, you, can keep, you can keep one hero top, one hero bot, and the three should be able to zone out the other two. There it is. We'll get the channel coming through shortly. Now, Hammer does have BFG if it is worth the delay. Ooh, Keep that was a almost a dead Decker Kane off of that Tron stun. Material channeling. This is going to be Dragonite picked up. Baylog down on the backside as Noah has just been jumping around like a maniac on that URL. They want the key. The adaptation and response uh, from the gray main and the way they pressured the camps and just went for keep ignoring the hammer i think was the best thing that uh they could have done like that that's that's how you're supposed to respond to a comp like this and they made the response and now they're the ones with massive map advantage and massive xp advantage like 14 to 11 the siege bullet. is coming in hammer is tossed backwards by garish no more into the fray available as the dragonite now approaches the keep a little bit of on the a little bit of asymmetrical pressure. We can see uh, that Noah on the URL is just trying to keep pressure up on the top lane. That keep will go down easily to the dragon. 14 into 12. 13 talent tier when Tyrael breaks out of this. Cursed bullet up in a couple of seconds. Everybody's going to have some R buttons, so what is the move to be made? Baylog goes down. Fresh is on the backside now, stepping up towards the core, but without uh, the kills, this is really just a feint, if anything, from RMU. Holy ground. Oh, this is not Tyria. a good spot for a Garrosh. There's the bullet. Indomitable is used, but Starfall comes out, and Harry Gary is gone. Look at that. They don't even want the camp. I, this is just... It's a confusing game because you don't know the intent of these teams, but RMU has done beautifully... Listen, they've understood... Really, it, it's not a secret here on Dragonshire. Double camp pressure mm. is the way to just take this game and just throttle your opponents out of it. Um, and uh, we saw it in the early part. Giants, Greymane, uh, and then eventually this neutral bruiser camp in the bottom lane is just more push than Hammer Zarya can, uh, can provide. This is triple camp with 16 talent tier advantage. And catapults. And sacred ground and sanctification and a Greymane. This is... I. I'm pretty Tyrael, sure is, is, Arian, they're ground? going for it. Yeah, they're going for it. They get one kill. Is out, fresh is stuck. Yep. Try to zoom in a little bit here. There's Tyrael's the expulsion the zone. Stay a while and listen. Connects on a number of different members. Tyrael in a trouble here. There's the sanctification as well as sacred ground. So the, maybe the core play interrupted, but on the flip side, RMU is just ranking up the kills. Two Vikings go down. There goes Zarya. Garrosh eliminated again. The third Viking is eliminated. And RMU will step up to the core with a veritable army behind them. And they will claim will the semifinal. Be... Yeah, they do take game three and earn themselves a sp in the final. Bobo, is that what you were expecting from that game? If I said I was, I'd be lying out my teeth. Um, <laughs> I was... That was crazy. Eight to zero. No kills for Toronto. Very, very well played from RMU. The adaptation, I think, was just brilliant. Uh, you see a lot of teams fumble or falter when approached with a comp like that, like a four-man Zarya push with Vikings. They're not really quite sure what they're supposed to do. For anyone watching who's run into that problem before in other amateur leagues or in team league, that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. Get the camp pressure, take your highest race hero, and then just run it down another lane. You just want to make sure that you have an equivalent race. Yes. You're not falling too far behind in structures, and that's what RMU did. And I think that's what ultimately is why they, they won the game. Yes. They, listen, they're, they're very good, smart players. Yeah, the, the mistake there is is when you see that sort of comp, you're like, how do we kill their four man? It's not the mm -hmm. concern. And that's exactly how you deal with it there. Um, and then we just saw like a neat little combo. Like I said, sanct uh, Sacred Ground as well as Sanctification. I mean, that is a heroic combination that is just built for a core rush. And I think once uh, RMU sort of realized that, hey, we've got to keep down in top 
you've got the 10 advantage that we need to end this game soon. Uh, and they moved in and they, you know, listen, you step up, you press the R button with three camps. Pretty tough to deal with. Yep. All right. Just to take the quick look at the recap, RMU <laughs> takes the set. They move on to the finals and, uh, they are going to beat uh, Cal Poly Pomona, unless I am wildly mistaken. Chat, please correct me if I am wrong. So uh, what we are going to have to do is just sort of reconfigure. I'm going to pick up the wizard, Bahamut himself. We will come back with the finals. Uh, we're going to be just a little late. We've had an interruption or two here. Uh, but before we go, uh, I do have to give a shout out to uh, my compadre, Mr. Crow. Thank you for joining me throughout this whole weekend. Uh, and thank you for yeah, setting thank up. You for thank you for setting up all the cool things that we have gotten to do here with the Casters for Hire. Yeah, well, they, shout out to Foul, too. Oh, He's oh he knows. He's yes. a very important side of the coin. Uh, <laughs> we are so, we're very lucky to have uh, have somebody like Foul. Um, just to let you guys know, uh, the Kester for Hire is um, just a project that a lot of the NGS and the amateur community um, has sort of set up. Um, we're, we're just trying to get out. Uh, our name's out there. We pick up a lot of different events. We've got uh, a great graphic designer right over there. Uh, and uh -huh. we do have a programmer that makes all of our cool, sweet overlays a possibility. We're still working on how to get um, the most out of this project, uh, but keep an eye out uh, for us in the future. I think that about all does right, it. Well, we'll, all right. I will go ahead and I will take my grace flag. Yes. All right. Um, and so wish you. I got to pick up Baja. So I'm going to drop stream for a little bit. We'll reconfigure and come back. Uh, Crow, always a pleasure, friend. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Have a great night. Have a great finals. I know I'll be tuned. All right, gang, we'll be back shortly.